there's a fine line between reliable, understated minimalism and being simply boring. It seems Samsung has joined Apple as a major player in that game. For my part, the quest and purpose of this channel is to find the two devices that are easiest to use, most convenient to carry, and provide top quality content to all of you. In this quest, I've relied heavily on a phone and an action camera. For the last two years, that phone has been the Google Pixel, but today we've got the Samsung Galaxy S23, the Plus version to be exact, and over the next several episodes, we'll be asking the question, can the Galaxy S23 be your only camera, and can it replace my Pixel 7 Pro as the go-to camera at He Has the Camera on YouTube? Today we're going to take a quick first look at this new device from Samsung and do a camera test, weighted heavily on video quality and features. Next week, I'll have my road trip review with a tour of one of the best mountain getaways in Southern California. And finally, in the last episode in the series, I'll give you my choice for the best two devices to stay mobile in the first half of 2023. So for the rest of this episode, most of the video that you'll see will be shot exclusively on the Galaxy S23 Plus. And I'll show you a phenomenon that rarely happens in Southern California. It's called a super bloom, and ironically, the last time I got it on film, it was shot on the Galaxy S10. Well, just in time for this release, we have another. We're here in Laguna Beach, California today, and we are here to check out the Galaxy S23 Plus. That's the phone that you're getting video from right now. Now, let me deal with the elephant in the room. Somewhere out there, there's some keyboard cowboy already in my comments telling me that I should be reviewing only the Galaxy S23 Ultra because it has the best cameras of any phone in the world. Well, that very well may be true, but price matters. And the fact is, all those videos out there comparing the Pixel 7 Pro, which is my phone right now, to the Galaxy S23 Ultra is nice, but there's a $400 difference. It's $749 for the Pixel 7 Pro, and it's $1199 for the Galaxy S23 Ultra. That is not an apples to apples comparison. Now that's Samsung's fault. So I want a comparable camera. And unless you have a ton of money and you don't care, like big influencers out there, the rest of us normal people, do. Ma it does matter what the price is. I can save you watching any reviews of the S23 Ultra. They're going to say it's the phone of the year. They're going to say it's a fantastic phone. Well, for $1199, it should be. And the fact is, if I put the Pixel 7 Pro up against the Galaxy S23 Ultra, I can already tell you what the review will be. It's going to be camera is better, yes, marginally. The video is better, yes, marginally. The price is a lot more, yes, absolutely. And it's less comfortable to hold in the hand than the Pixel 7 Pro. Done. This video is going to be about the Galaxy S23, and I want to see if this phone can replace my Pixel 7 Pro as the go-to camera at He Has the Camera on YouTube. Whether you choose the Galaxy S23 or the Galaxy S23 Plus, the microphone setup is going to be exactly the same on both devices. Now, I've gone and taken out all of the things in this room that generally improve sound quality, so this is how it might sound in a typical room in a typical house. The camera setup on the two devices is exactly the same as well, so really what you need to decide is whether you want the smaller screen, which is 6.1 inches on the Galaxy S23, or you want to bump up to the 6.6 inch screen on the Galaxy S23 Plus. Also, if you need a little extra to keep you going during the day, the Galaxy S23 Plus has a 4700 milliamp battery, and that might be the way to go. Now, when I need a little extra to keep me going during the day, I turn to my sponsor, Magic Mind. See how I did that? Sometimes it seems like just every day is the same. Locked in a routine for years, and it always ended for me late at night editing video and pounding coffee. The problem was it never really ended. I was up all night. That is until I started drinking Magic Mind instead of coffee at night. Magic Mind didn't give me the jitters, and it helped me focus, improve my mental clarity, improve my work product, and it's good for me too. Magic Mind is a productivity shot packed full of vitamins and natural herbs that help you feel mentally relaxed and alert at the same time. If you'd like to try Magic Mind, there's a link along with my discount code in the description. Go ahead and check it out for yourself. The Galaxy S23 has an IP68 rating, so if you don't mind shoving your phone into a wave at the beach, go for it. But I prefer to keep it dry. And I'm glad I did because switching over to 4K 60 frames per second and just slowing things down about 50% gave me some great shots of Laguna Beach. One of the most difficult things for a camera to handle is backlight, and the ultra-wide lens on Galaxy never seems to struggle. Producing great dynamic range and solid detail, if not quite as good as the main camera, even in challenging environments. Mm -hmm. 
all the lenses do a fantastic job with color, reproducing images that are very much true to life. And when switching between the main lens and the ultra wide, it remains consistent as far as color is concerned, which is a problem that many cameras, including my Pixel, suffer from. This is one area that I am very impressed with. Let's talk about video stabilization and ambient noise, two of the most important things to me when it comes to recording a YouTube channel. Now, nine times out of 10, if I am going to be driving in the car, I'm gonna to go to my action camera. Why? Because the action camera has unbeatable stabilization. That's why I can throw it on my mountain bike, go tearing down a trail, and everything looks perfect. The problem with action cameras is the moment that you get into a situation where you have low light, everything goes to shit. Now, right now we're on the front-facing selfie camera, which is upgraded this year for Galaxy S23 to 12 megapixels. But Samsung has also added in a software element to the mix when it comes to stabilization, and they're using AI to do that. In a little while, when we get a lower light situation and we get to night, that's what I'm really interested in. Right now we're headed to a bar because I think with a bar you get that great low light situation. Again, my channel is all about what does the average person do, and that's really where you're taking a lot of your video is inside places like that, restaurants, bars, out with your family, uh, and plus there's alcohol, which is a you know win-win for me. So we're in 30 frames per second. It's raining like a son of a bitch. It's dark. As far as what I can see on the viewfinder, on the screen, it looks fantastic. Also, this would actually be a good way for you to figure out whether or not these microphones are isolating noise because right now it is so loud in here with the rain. I always park so far away so that I don't get dings and dents and now of course I am regretting it because it's raining. Anyway, uh, we've got the main camera still going right now and let's see. Those driving shots were almost as steady as an action camera, and I was in a three-quarter ton truck on a back road that was complete garbage. I, for one, am very impressed by how Galaxy handles low light and night scenes, specifically the control that Samsung has built into the auto white balance, which on a lot of cameras goes wild, especially in low light. Everything, even if it isn't the best in the individual situation, just seems to be very consistent and overall usable, which is starting to become the real story here. Well, since you can't drive to any of this, it is quite a bit of a hike. Luckily, all I need is my tripod, and one of the benefits of only having a little bit of equipment, right? That's the whole idea of what would the average person have? Probably not even a tripod. You see all that green behind me? Well, that shouldn't be there. Actually, this is how the high desert is supposed to look all year round. But every few years, with the right amount of rain and the right conditions, Southern California goes through a rare transformation, and it's called a super bloom. It only lasts 45 days, but what better way to wrap up my thoughts on the Galaxy S23 cameras and see how saturation levels are handled. Oversaturation and overprocessing has always been one of my complaints with Galaxy devices, and clearly Samsung has found a way to strike the right balance here. I think these scenes look great and the colors are both true to life and add just enough punch of color to be a little bit more friendly than say my Pixel 7 Pro. I haven't even decided if I'm going to buy this phone yet, but I can tell you that my first impressions exceeded my expectations. There are a lot of good shots I didn't share from Laguna Beach, and going through them, I have to admit I'm very impressed. Somehow this S23 and S23 Plus just seem like really well-rounded devices that would appeal to those who might be looking for sort of an Apple-style comfort level, where everything just seems to be really good. Galaxy S23 provides a solid camera, impressive video, and fantastic dynamic range. And it looks to me like Samsung's boasts about nitography, a word I will try to forget, and stabilization hold up to the hype. Join me next week for a road trip review and head-to-head -head with the Pixel 7 Pro, and be sure to check out my discount code for Magic Mind in the description. As always, like and subscribe so you can join me on this journey to find the best way to stay mobile and save your memories in 2023. Thanks for joining me and see you soon.